I am not by nature, truth be told, a college basketball fan. It's not like every November rolls around and I suddenly have to sit there in front of the TV and go, oh my God, I can't wait to watch what's going on in the ACC or the Big 12. No, my sole purpose when it comes to college basketball is making money. And on any particular team, on any particular conference, on any given night, that's what turns me on when it comes to college hoops. Now, the season started in November. Here we are. We're getting into the college conference tournaments. The big dance is less than two weeks away, and then three weeks of nonstop frenzied action. But if you had told me four months ago, back in November when the season started, that my three most profitable conferences would have been the Sun Belt, the Missouri Valley, and Conference USA, well, I would have laid you even money. It could have easily just as been the Big 12, the Big 10, and the ACC. It's just the way the cookie crumbles because you've got 351 Division I teams. Now, if I'm doing media appearances and I'm on TV and radio, as I've done many times over the past 20 years, listen, I can hold court and talk about 250 to 300 of those teams easily because that's just the way it's always been. I've got a photographic memory when it comes to these things. And, you know, I spend a hell of a lot of time on the Internet reading about it. But there's a difference between talking about teams and putting your money on these teams and making money for you and for me. Big, big difference, as you know. And it just so happens at the start of the season, there were certain teams that you kind of latch on to and you keep coming back to. And then suddenly when you start making money going on or against these teams, well, you find out a lot about their opponents. And then suddenly you find yourself specializing in certain conferences. And why fix it if it ain't broke? And that's how last night I scored once again with one of my favorite teams, Middle Tennessee State, another 20-dime raised the bar release. I've had six of them this season. Five and one with those selections. And three of the last four have involved Middle Tennessee State and Western Kentucky. Last night, going with Middle Tennessee State, a five and a half, eh, five, five and a half point chalk. I got them at five. At home against Western Kentucky, I told you I had absolutely no problem going with Middle Tennessee State in that one. They rolled by 18 points. And, of course, it was just last Saturday that I went with Western Kentucky at home, minus three, and they beat up Old Dominion in the same conference, Conference USA, by 22 points. Another 20-dime play. I'm going to raise the bar again tonight. Uh, another game I like, this time, it's in the Ivies. It's Penn at Yale, and it's another 20-dime play. The first six of them, you've gotten them. All for half price play of the day releases. Same thing goes tonight. The coupon code is RAISE, R-A-I-S-E, and it's even stronger than that 15-dime play, my normal top-rated 15-dime play that I scored with Kentucky, minus 9, an 18-point blowout went over Ole Miss on Wednesday evening. And that's what I've got going tonight, and as I always like to preface when I have a big play, listen, I'm not telling you to cash in the kids' tuition fund. I'm not telling you to raid the mortgage fund. I'm not telling you to go without food on your table for the weekend. If you've been with me, you've been winning, you're playing with somebody else's money, meaning your bookmaker or your sports book, I'm letting you know I like this play a lot, and I'm 5-1 and one with them. If you're new to the dance, no pun intended with the big one around the corner, it means that, hey, you've got to play it according to your own bankroll allocation system. You've got to play it according to your money management system. Because, again, the golden rule of gambling is simply put, never bet more than you're going to afford to lose, and you never find yourself in a deep financial abyss from which there is no escape. That's the simple bottom line. Let's get to your complimentary plays here tonight. I've got a couple of them. Now, I lost both of the complimentary plays last night, which sucks, but I won with Middle Tennessee State, and that's all that really matters as far as I'm concerned. Um, by, oh, by the way, today, on this day in history, let it not be said that I didn't inform you of what's going on. Uh, a record that I think is right up there with uh, Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. It will never, ever be broken. It will be approached, but it will never be broken because of the way the game has changed. Do you know what record it is? It's in the NBA. I'll let you dwell on it. It's a record that will never be challenged. It will be challenged. It has been challenged. But those that have challenged it will fall far, far short and will never, ever be broken. Think about it. Uh, tonight, your first complimentary play. Um, actually, is this going to be your lone complimentary play? 
Hmm, okay. You know, sometimes with the complimentary plays, it's not so much that I love the game, but I handicap a game, and I want to present it to you because I think it's just an interesting game from a dilemma standpoint. And the game I want to talk to you about tonight is Rhode Island and Davidson. So let me set the stage here for you. Davidson is coming off one of the best games in college basketball all season long, a couple of nights ago. Uh, it was a game in which I gave you the other side. St. Bonaventure is a complimentary play. St. Bonnie and Davidson, a couple nights back, played a triple overtime game. I mean, it was one hell of a game. Let me just get you the exact final score of that contest. Um, da, 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 da. Just looking it up for you. Jesus, you think I'd have it right here. It was 117-113, triple overtime game. Three-hour, 17-minute game at St. Bonnie. Um, what a hell of a game. Uh, now, because they lost that game, they are locked into the number third seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament. So this is senior night, their uh, home finale for Davidson returning back to North Carolina here this evening. They are 10-2 and two at home. Now... Uh, kind of an interesting game uh, because Rhode Island had already wrapped up the regular season title in uh, the Atlantic 10. So the Rams had senior night. They've got that veteran backcourt. Uh, you would have thought that they would show up on senior night. They played, without a doubt, their worst game of the entire season uh, at home against St. Joseph's a couple of nights ago. And I mean, they, uh, it's... It's an understatement saying it was their worst game of the season. They lost by 30 points at home on Tuesday night, on senior night. They shot 28.1% from the field. They had won 17 straight games at home. Remember, until this team lost at St. Bonaventure two Friday nights ago, they had won 21 straight uh, conference games. They had won 16 straight um, uh, ACC game or Atlantic 10 games um, this year. I mean, it was, I don't even know what happened. It was like a bunch of high school kids showed up for Rhode Island and played on senior night, no less. I mean, it was just crazy. So you have a Rhode Island team tonight that would certainly like to regain a little momentum going into the Atlantic 10 tournament where they're the number one seed. You have a Davidson team that put everything into almost a three and a half hour marathon on Tuesday night that's coming home and is naturally going to get pumped playing on senior night. But let me ask you this. How did senior night turn out to Rhode Island a couple of nights ago? And you have a Davidson team where Peyton Aldridge and uh, Kalan Grady, their top two scorers who had 45 and 39 points respectively in that game at St. Bonaventure, the triple overtime game, and played 51 and 45 minutes in that game, how much did they have in the tank? In fact, you had four of their five starters playing at least 45 minutes in that game at St. Bonnie. And then you look at what happened in the first go-round. Uh, the first meeting, February 9th, Rhode Island won that game in the only meeting between these two teams so far this season, 72 to 59. And in that particular game, um, the Wildcats, four for 17. That's Davidson, four for 17 on three-pointers. This is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. Hell, they had just 16 three-pointers on that triple overtime loss. Now, what happens when you're fatigued? Your legs. And it generally affects your outside shooting, okay? Now, in the first go-round, in Rhode Island, granted, they were 4 for 17 on three-pointers. Um, Rhode Island hit 10 of 25 from three-point range. They're a very good shooting team. They're a very strong defensive perimeter team. They also out-rebounded Davidson 32 to 23 in the first game. Their bench, Rhode Island, outscored Davidson's 41 to 12. I just told you how many minutes four of the five starters for Davidson had to go. Four of them played at least 45 minutes in that game. I thought at first Davidson would be the way to go here, but, and it's a hunch, I think Rhode Island has every bit as much to play for and more so to get their mojo back in this game heading into the Atlantic 10 tournament because a team that had won 16 straight games is suddenly 2-2 two and two in its last four, losing at St. Bonaventure, losing at home 
to uh, St. Joe's and you don't want to go into the tournament as the number one seed with no momentum. And in reality, although it's senior night, and although Davidson would like to win this game, they're locked into the number three seed. It's kind of meaningless game for them, other than it's being senior night. And again, how much do they have left in the tank? So, I like, again, Rhode Island here as the slight road underdog in this contest. So, that's your complimentary play. I'm going to go with it. I wish you well, and talk to you again on Saturday when we do this one more time.